It is uh, Sunday, the 20th of May, 2018. I'm in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, just starting up my alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy abuse of all kinds and various other Unitarian uh, Universalist injustices, abuses, and uh, hypocrisy. It happens to be the Victoria Day weekend in Canada and in Quebec it's uh, La Journée des Patriotes. So uh, what better way to celebrate uh, 20 years worth of protesting against Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse of all kinds and as I said various other Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses and hypocrisy such as the uh, intolerance and bigotry of the anti-religious atheist members of the Unitarian Universalist religious community that uh, makes many Unitarian churches uh, less than welcoming to God-believing people in general and Christians in particular. Uh, so I think uh, since my protest began in May of 1998, and it is now May of 2018, um, that yeah, I think I think uh, Victoria Day, which is towards the middle end of the month, uh, the, you know, basically two thirds into the month, is a very good time to uh, celebrate the anniversary or observe the anniversary of my protest. So, although I'm not doing anything special in terms of picket signs or protest actions or chalk slogans today uh, to specifically mark the 20th anniversary, at least not yet. I might maybe put down a chalk slogan <coughs> that notes that. Um, nonetheless, uh, today we are in fact uh, officially celebrating 20 years worth of peaceful public protest against Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy abuse, etc outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal. That being said, my protest has been shut down on at least two occasions by Montreal Unitarians who misuse the SPVM police force and the criminal justice system to temporarily shut down my protest. And one of those shutdowns was for a full year. Um, so in real terms, in terms of celebrating 20 years of actual protest, uh, that won't be until next year. So, uh, but we're, we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the beginning of my protest against Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy abuse, etc., outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal in May of 1998. I don't remember exactly when it, it was in May of 1998, um, but it was definitely in May. The first uh, news report was in early June and had already been protesting for a week or two. Uh, so the protest clearly started in, in May. So I think uh, Mother's Day is another uh, significant anniversary uh, in May where something interesting happened on a previous Mother's Day, Mother's Day 2013. We had an interesting uh, intervention by two uh, SPVM police officers that uh, was quite problematic in terms of how they conducted themselves. Uh, on that note, I would like to say the SPVM has improved significantly their behavior towards me in the last uh, several years. And in fact, as I was writing down uh, these chalk slogans this morning, an SPVM uh, police car from Station 11 drove by, and instead of intervening and demanding what I was doing and uh, telling me I couldn't do chalk slogans and this and that. They just gave me a friendly wave and, and drove right by, which is, I think, the appropriate way to respond to someone who is writing chalk slogans on the sidewalk within the context of a peaceful public protest. Uh, basically, regardless of the strict legality <coughs> or not of, of writing chalk slogans on the sidewalk in terms of municipal bylaws and so on, in terms of the uh, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, right to uh, freedom of expression, right to freedom of opinion, which of course includes 
the right to engage in peaceful public protest, uh, chalk slogans should be allowed, <clears throat> even if there may be a municipal bylaw that, uh, that might prohibit such uh, activities in other circumstances. Um, so, uh, and as I understand it, having you know, done my due diligence in terms of uh, the legality of chalk slogans or not, there have in fact been court decisions which have upheld the right of people to write chalk slogans during peaceful public protests. So, so I'm on very solid grounds and we've already discussed this a fair number of times with the SPVM. Uh, and I basically said to them, you know, one of the last times I talked to them about the chalk slogans, which is actually going back uh, at least three years now, I think it was 2014 or possibly 2015 when we had this discussion, uh, they were disputing my right to uh, write chalk slogans. They were actually quite nice about it, like they weren't intimidating or threatening, they just said, you know, well, we don't think we, you can do this, we think this is uh, illegal. And I said, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is legal. And, uh, you know, uh, I've spoken to people who have, uh, you know, told me that it's legal and they're in a position to know these things. Um, I said, why don't you check with your lawyers, i.e. the lawyers who work with the SPVM, and I will double check with my legal advisors and we'll take it from there. I also made it clear to them that if they wanted to ticket me, they could. However, I would definitely contest that ticket and would contest it right up to the Supreme Court if necessary. Um, as it happens, uh, I think what happened is, is they did in fact uh, consult their lawyers, i.e. The, the lawyers who advised the SPVM on the legality of their police work and so on, and I think their lawyers said, oh yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite legal, um, because they haven't bothered me about my chalk slogan since. Uh, so it's been at least at least two, maybe three or four years since uh, the SPVM have in any way disputed my chalk slogans and they've actually come on a, several other occasions in the intervening uh, time period and they've seen my chalk slogans like they did this morning. You know, they saw me in the process of writing the chalk slogans. So, you know, they had eyewitness, you know, uh, testimony that they could say, oh yes, we saw Robin with our own eyes writing the chalk slogan. So if, if it was illegal, you know, that could be, you know, used against me in pretty solid testimony from uh, police officers claiming, oh yes, we actually saw him writing. You know, there's, it's not just a question of, well, there happened to be chalk slogans there and then Robin was in the area, so we assume it was him. No, they, they saw me writing the chalk slogan. I was right in the middle of it. Um, and uh, they just waved and drove right by, which I believe is the correct way to respond to me writing chalk slogans. So uh, I will uh, just uh, on that note uh, say that yeah, I'm actually quite thankful that the SPVM after years of inappropriately intervening in my protest have finally come around to, for the most part anyway, uh, recognizing my rights to engage in peaceful public protest including the right to uh, write chalk slogans on the sidewalk. So it looks like it may rain. It was actually supposed to be raining, but when I got up this morning, there was actually blue sky and thin clouds and you know, the sidewalks were dry. I didn't think I'd be able to put down any chalk slogans this morning. I was expecting the sidewalks to be wet, uh, but they did dry up enough that I found some dry patches, completely dry patches, or almost completely dry patches, and was able to uh, write a three chalk slogans. So uh, it looks like it may rain now, though I see some clouds heading this way, kind of gray. So I'm hoping it won't, but uh, it looks like it might. So we'll just play this one by ear. Anyway, as I said, it's Victoria Day 2018. And uh, although I'm not doing anything special, uh, yet, anyway, I could write a chalk slogan. I'm not doing anything, you know, out of the ordinary to specifically observe and celebrate the 20th anniversary of the beginning of my protest here, but it is, in fact, <clears throat> pretty much a full 20 years, probably slightly more than a full 20 years now, that I've been protesting outside 
the Unitarian Church of Montreal. So uh, this is more recent. Uh, this is uh, something that happened in 2012. So quite some time after I uh, began my protest, but in uh, June of 2012, so you know, just under six years ago now, I was served with a cease and desist demand letter written by the Unitarian Universalist Association's Canadian attorney, Steichman Elliott Barristers and Solicitors litigation lawyer, Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb, which amongst other ludicrous and quite literally laughable accusations, falsely accused me of violating Canada's blasphemy law, which I didn't even know existed at the time, uh, in an effort to uh, intimidate me into removing blog posts to tell the readily verifiable truth about uh, what Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb described as uh, such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape in that cease and desist demand letter. Um, so we're not going to go into too much detail about that today, simply because I've gone into a lot of detail about it over the last month. Uh, uh, for this, basically, uh, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, uh, April was uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month, so I spoke a lot about child abuse issues uh, during uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month, and you know went into a lot of detail about uh, you know child abuse in general, both sexual and non-sexual, committed by Unitarian Universalist uh, ministers and Sunday school teachers, etc and you know how the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association uh, tries to uh, cover up and hide uh, child abuse committed by its uh, ministers and Sunday school teachers and indeed uh, lay people. The false blasphemous libel accusation against me being just one of the ways in which uh, the Unitarian Universalist uh, Association as an institution and uh, no shortage of individual Unitarian Universalist ministers, etc., uh, try to cover up and deny child abuse, including uh, egregious child sex abuse in the Unitarian Universalist religious community. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about uh, how this protest began back in 1998, since it is pretty much the 20th anniversary of the beginning of the protest. I think today would be <clears throat> as good a day as ever to uh, talk about uh, how this protest got started. Um, and essentially what it came down to, I'll try and keep it relatively brief and concise, not going to, to ridiculous amounts of detail, but in uh, November of 1995, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan, who was the new minister of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. In fact, he hadn't even been officially installed yet, if I remember correctly. Uh, in a private meeting with me, he uh, <clears throat> labeled my theistic religious beliefs as being nothing but silliness and fantasy. Um, he went on to label a, a pretty profound, you know, revelatory religious experience uh, that I experienced in uh, 1992, which I was trying to explain to him. He, he rudely interrupted me as I'm trying to explain this religious experience to him. And he says, you mean your psychotic experience. And he angrily followed that up by angrily insisting that I seek what he called professional help. So he was obviously demanding that I seek psychiatric treatment from my alleged psychosis because of the fact that I'm claiming a quite profound religious experience. Um, <clears throat> so, he went on then to rudely interrupt me again as I was talking about an interreligious event uh, that I had organized, inspired <clears throat> in part by this religious experience, an interreligious event that uh, promoted uh, care for the creation uh, and so I'm not talking about this interreligious event and he rudely interrupts me again and he says you mean your cult <clears throat> and uh, you know I'm a pretty 
how can I put it? Well, to borrow the words of uh, Christian Gravner, also known as... Wow. <laughs> no good. Uh, they have problems. Uh, I'm talking about the bigger religion too, not just the local church, but the bigger community. Too, oh, they've got problems, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go that far, but uh, but no, they, they they help they help hide it though. If if they even if they don't have any, you know, sex abuse going on in the church, they help to cover it up in the bigger community for sure. I, I, I was about to join a garden group there, but I was abused when I was a kid. Really? For seven years. Yeah. Ouch. Well, put it this way, I I, I can't say that the local church itself... Well, you are. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about, as I said, this, this is Unitarian Universalist is, is the whole community. I understand. Yeah, yeah, so, but anyway, uh, that being said, I actually do know, uh, I have reasonable grounds to believe there's at minimum being psychological and emotional abuse of children by some people. In so, there. yes, locally. In that sector, right there. Wow. Yeah. I have a daughter, I was going to help, help. Right. Well, put it this way. I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, discouraging you from doing that, but keep your keep your eyes and ears open. <laughs> you know, just the fact, just the fact that they tolerate it. I've actually been physically assaulted by the religious education. Like the Sunday school director physically assaulted me for for protesting against child abuse. Uh, September a year or two ago. Are they still there, that person? Yeah, he's still there. His name's David Horan. If you go to YouTube and you search David Horan Unitarian, you'll see my video of the assault. <laughs> wow, did you press charges? Uh, no, I didn't. I thought the video was embarrassing enough. It wasn't, I, I wasn't seriously hurt. In fact, he got more hurt than I did. <laughs> Were you like me when you were a kid? Uh, no, I was not uh, sexually abused myself. I had other, you know, like emotional and physical stuff, but, but no sexual abuse, thankfully. Uh, I hope it, I hope, you know, like, I hope you're sure of this, man. No, I'm sure of it. I mean, no, people have been... There. They seem really, really nice. And, uh, you know, I was a teacher a long time ago. Right. I could usually tell right away if someone's like that because it would happen.